the Ohio Department of Education was there saying, you know, you're here to be recognized for doing such an excellent job. And not only that, but we were there with so many other school districts that we were like, yeah, we're Lancaster, we're General Sherman, we're here. Um, it, it was wonderful just to know, just to be able to represent our, our area, um, but to be in front of so. Well, I think it speaks volumes of, of everybody, the entire staff, obviously, you know, starting with um, the top down and if you look at the building, you know, Mr. Greathouse um, and, and the deans and the assistants and all the way down to the support staff. Uh, it really is a team effort and you know that's a message that that Mr. Greathouse Jack will tell you firsthand. It kind of renews your sense of why you're doing it or it renews your sense of oh yeah this is why I had that hard day the other day so it kind of refreshes you a little bit which is so important in this career um, uh, for that to happen. Um, one of the reasons that we were recognized is that um, with we were closing the gap in reading and writing and specifically with students who are at risk or students who are on IEPs. So that means kids that have like a mild learning disability. And I think one of the reasons we're so successful is that we give lots of opportunities for them to succeed. Um, and I think a big part of that is in the decision making process always keeping kids first. You put the students first, you put kids first, you know that's one of the mottos that I definitely use and that I've heard Jack talk about, you know, whenever you're making a decision do it so that the kids come first. And if you if you use that and live by that in the classroom, you know it's kind of hard to go astray in the wrong direction when, when you're sticking to that that uh, that method, that, that platform. The kids really want to do well, and if you find a way to motivate them, then they will work hard for you. And it's amazing sometimes these games these kids make from before they come to us, or from one year to the next, or just from their sixth grade year to their eighth grade year and it really makes it it really makes it worth teaching because those kids are working because they want to do well. well helping our kids to succeed i think you know we start in the beginning of the year really finding things that they do that are right and i think one of the biggest ways of, I'm, in inclusion um, one of the big ways i think i'm most successful is that i have um, i build really positive relationships with the kids and you have to have a positive relationship and that doesn't mean that you're their friend it, it means that you have a you have a student teacher relationship it's it's on respect but you care about them we do take pride in you know we we take kids that are told they can't and they can and we prove that year after year we take a lot of pride in that and it, it was nice to go to the recognition and receive our award to show everybody you know look what we you know look what we did look what our students did in the face of adversity we see students i mean you know that they're not sure where they're spending the night you know they're they've been with mom or they've been with dad or there's boyfriends and girlfriends involved you know sometimes we even have students who are not in a safe environment have been placed in foster care we have students who um have very little material possessions um, you know, we have a lot, since we have 50% or more, I guess in our district right now with on free or reduced lunch, I mean, that really is, that's, that's a real problem for them when they come. So, you know, they are getting breakfast, they are getting lunch. So that makes a big difference. Some of the things that some people take for granted, you know, a good night's sleep, coming in prepared, rested, ready to learn, eager to learn. Um, and so, that, you know, that, that poses some challenges that, uh, you know, that a teacher kind of has to embrace and, and deal with because that is the reality. Um, so you find ways to cope with that, you find ways to deal with that. Kids are gonna wanna do well for themselves, but they really do wanna do well for the adults in their lives. And a lot of times, you know, you're you know, the adult they see the majority of the day. Um, and if you have a good relationship with them and you reach, find a way to reach them, then they will wanna do well. They don't wanna disappoint. And when they know you care about them, um, they will let you speak into their lives, they will, and you find things that they do right. One thing I really like to do is make a positive call home. If I can get a positive call home and get parents on, you know, we're all on the same side. We, we want the kids to, I want my students to succeed, and so do they. We want our students to be functional, contributing members of society. Whether they leave school and work, whether they leave school to go on to more schooling, whether they go on to school and educate others um, in their lifetime, our goal is to get them as, as to be the best members of society um, as they can be. I mean, I just think it's the combination of the work the staff puts in and how the staff cares for each other to do well, starting from the top. 
um, and it's a trickle down. We just we care for each other. We care for the students. The students end up, you know, caring for the, their staff and themselves. It's just one big cycle, really. I, I think that's staff and students make Sherman a place to be. I think it's, it's great for Lancaster High School. It's great for the community. Every single person that comes into Lancaster High School on a daily basis and works with kids and puts kids first, makes decisions for kids, helps kids, and you know, wants this place to be better. I think it's a great, you know, a great thing to have. And I, like I said, I'm just really appreciative to be able to take place in it and, and, and be there. Thank you.